When you learn the theory behind how the constant speed propeller system works, you get an idea that the procedures for using it in actual flight will add some complexity to the cockpit. As with anything, your playbook begins and ends with the pilot's operating handbook specific to your aircraft. For our demo today, we'll be in a Piper Aero, a complex aircraft with an IO360 engine. We'll break down our demo of how to operate the constant speed prop into three parts, the run-up checks, the climb and cruise phases of flight, and finally we'll do some pattern work to exercise some routine procedures you can use to lock in your knowledge of how to use the prop. Before we get into any of that though, let's look at the manifold pressure gauge and what it's really telling us. We'll start on the ramp at College Park, close to sea level, with the engine shut down. Our sea level pressure is set on the altimeter at 30 inches, 3000 if we're saying it over the radio. This gives us an altitude of 50 feet, matching our elevation here. Now we have a glance down at the manifold pressure gauge. It's reading exactly 30 inches too. The engine isn't on, so there's no air being pulled into the engine intake to affect air pressure there. This gauge is just reading ambient outside air pressure. Now, if we change the weather so that the sea level pressure is something insane like 32 inches, watch how the manifold pressure gauge moves with the change in conditions. Same thing when we go way back with the pressure. So changes in outside air pressure affect the reading on this gauge. Now let's really drive the point home. We're on the ramp in Aspen, Colorado, high in the Rocky Mountains. Once again, our sea level pressure is set at 30 inches. This gives us a correct indicated altitude of around 7,700 feet. Now look down at the manifold. It's about 22 and a half inches. Of course it is, we're much higher up now, so the outside air pressure is way lower. This is what'll happen to our manifold pressure as we climb from sea level pressure of 30 inches to altitudes up here where the air is way thinner. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Now let's look at our first phase of flight at the hold short for the runway to do the run up back at College Park. With the engine on and the throttle back to idle, the air pressure getting through the intake is very low, only around 10 inches. Let's work through the POH ground check checklist. We'll set the parking brake, then move the propeller fully forward, that's the blue handle in the middle of the throttle quadrant. When power is applied, this setting will bring the prop to its full forward, low pitch, high RPM blade angle. So now let's bring the throttle forward until the RPM reads 2000. If you paid attention in the video on how the constant speed prop works, you may ask why the throttle controls the RPM if the whole point of the constant speed unit was so that the prop speed doesn't change with power changes. And you'd be wise to ask that. The reason is that at low power settings like this, the prop is said to be off the governor. There isn't enough power yet for the governor to control blade angle to hold propeller RPM constant. So at first here, it's RPM that changes with throttle increases. Now, just like in other prop planes, we'll do our mag check on both sides. We can have a look at our vacuum gauge and check oil pressure and temperature. Our ammeter on the arrow is a basic load meter. It's showing we're charging with the needle to the right. We could test it by turning something big on and off like the landing light to see how it responds. We'll go up top and test the enunciator panel to make sure all the lights are working. Now we come to the propeller test. We want to make sure the constant speed unit is working properly. Currently, we're at the high RPM setting, so there's no pressure being applied to the propeller. We'd like to add some pressure and see what happens. Remember that the blade angle is moved by applying oil pressure to a spring in the prop assembly. When we pull the prop control back, the additional oil will move the propeller to a higher pitch, lower RPM angle. We should notice a reduction in RPM and a slight increase in manifold pressure. As oil pressure is transferred from the case to the prop, we'll also see a decrease in oil pressure. So we'll do what's called cycling the prop. We're gonna quickly and smoothly bring the prop control back, and as soon as we see a reaction on the gauges, bring it back to full forward. We could do this only once to produce the desired effect, but we may also repeat it once or twice just to make sure we have a look at the oil pressure, manifold pressure, and RPM gauges. It's also not a bad idea to take a look at the cowling to make sure we didn't just cause some oil to leak out. So that's our prop check. The rest of the checklist involves cycling alternate air, there shouldn't be a power drop, this handbook has us turning off the electric fuel pump to make sure the fuel pressure is okay, and then we can bring the throttle back. So we've done our run-up checks and would move on to the before takeoff checklist. Next, we're gonna take our position on the runway and get ready to roll. The prop is full forward, giving us high RPM and low pitch for takeoff, and we'll advance the throttle all the way open. As we begin our climb out, let's focus on the manifold pressure gauge and tachometer. Close to sea level, with the throttle all the way open, 
our manifold pressure is about 28 and a half inches, while the RPM reads 2700. Now we're at full throttle and we'll keep it there as we climb up to 3000 feet, but you could probably guess what will happen to our manifold pressure as we do. From where we started at 28.5 inches, we're down to about 26 inches by the time we approach 3000 feet. Again, this makes sense when you think about how we lose about an inch of pressure for every 1,000 feet in altitude we climb. As a result, power drops. Constant speed or no, the higher up we are, the less power we produce unless we're able to turbocharge our engine. So now we begin our level off. We'll pitch down, which you can only see here on our attitude indicator, and as the speed builds, we're going to set cruise power. How do we do this? Let's have a look at the POH again. In section 5, we have performance charts. We're looking for the power setting tables. We have a lot to choose from. Let's start with our pressure altitude, 3,000 feet. If we want 75% power, we'll use this column. It tells us we'll want 2,500 RPM, and at this altitude, 25.3 inches of pressure. This relationship, 25 on the tachometer and 25 on the manifold pressure, is sometimes referred to as 25 squared. Besides the fact that combining two 25 figures together and calling it 25 squared isn't really how math works, the practice of squaring the gauges leads to one of the more infamous misconceptions in aviation. More on this later. For now though, the POH has us flying the so-called 25 squared for our altitude here. To set that power, let's work left to right on the throttle quadrant. The first thing we're gonna do is reduce power to 25 inches. We don't have to come back too far on the throttle to do so. Next, we're gonna gently bring the blue prop control back to 2500 RPM. Never make abrupt inputs on the prop control. Remember, you're playing around with oil pressure and the propeller. Finally, we could bring our mixture back to our desired cruise setting and can run through the remainder of our airplane's cruise checklist. Now, let's say we'd like to climb from 3000 to 4000. We'll be going back to full throttle with the prop full forward, but this time, let's move from right to left on the quadrant. We'll start by pitching up for a good cruise climb speed, then we'll move the mixture full rich or wherever we want it for the climb, then advance the prop to full forward, followed by bringing in full power. We'll head up to 4,000. As we do, let's look at our cruise table. This time, let's do 65% power, and we have a choice between using 2,200 RPM or 2,500. Let's choose 22. The manifold pressure setting here is 24.7. We'll approach 4,000, bring the nose level, and just as we did in the first level off, we're going to work left to right again. First, the throttle comes back to 24.7 inches, which it doesn't need to come back much at all to do. Then we move the prop back to 2200 and finishing with the mixture coming back. If you're confused about the logic behind whether you go left to right or right to left, the whole thing is set up so that we don't overstress the prop. Remember when we discussed how this system works at low RPM settings, which force the blade to a high angle with high power settings, which stress the prop should be avoided. So to avoid overstressing the prop, power reduction should start with the throttle, the prop being the last thing to be reduced so it stays higher. It stays on top. We go left to right in power reductions, like for a level off. In power increases, like starting a climb, we also want to keep the prop on top. We work right to left. The prop goes up to its position before we advance the throttle to high power. If you can remember to always keep the prop on top or don't have the prop in a low setting while having the throttle in a high setting, the left to right, right to left progression will make more sense for you. Now, back to the discussion on 25 squared. In the interest of following the keep the prop on top rule, many pilots over the years have developed the myth that you should never fly over square, so to speak which is their way of saying you can never have a manifold pressure setting that is higher than your RPM. So 26 inches of pressure with 2,500 RPM would be too much, for example. But let's think of what we're comparing here. Manifold pressure reads atmospheric pressure in inches of mercury. RPM measures the number of rotations of the propeller per minute. These units aren't related to each other. In fact, if we use the metric system like everyone else, the phrase 25 squared would be meaningless. Instead of 25 inches of manifold pressure, it would be 850 millibars. Classic apples to oranges comparison. If you want further proof, just look to the POH. Plenty of recommended power settings have us at a manifold pressure in inches above the RPM. Here at 4,000 feet, we're at 65% power, which uses 24.7 inches of mercury, well above the 2200 RPM recommended. 
This point will further be driven home when we look at turbo aircraft, which can be flown at 30 or 40 inches of pressure while still in the mid 2000s of RPM. What we're doing with the keep the prop on top isn't a numbers game, as much as a best practice to make sure we're not running a low prop setting at high power. Don't overthink it. Left to right, right to left. Keep the prop on top. We can apply the same principle in a descent back down to 3000. Keep the prop on top. Move left to right. Throttle back first. Prop will want to actually keep up. No need to pull it back. And mixture as we want it. All right, finally, there's no better way to learn a new aircraft than to do some pattern work with it. We can work through every phase of flight in a shorter period of time. First, we'll start with a takeoff, which we've already seen. We'll pitch for best climb rate, and when we're out of usable runway, bring the gear up. Some people like to bring the power to 25 squared here to ease up in the engine, and that's fine, though the POH for the aero doesn't mention this for a climb. I just caution that engine problems often manifest themselves on the first reduction in power, so you might want to make sure you have enough altitude before doing so. So we're going to fly a regular left pattern. We level off at 1,000 feet, and it's going to be left to right. Let's do 55% power here. Throttle to 23.4 inches, prop to 2200, and mixture lean for cruise. Let's turn the fuel pump and landing lights off to complete the cruise checklist. Now, as we get close to our beam point, we're going to introduce a concept that may save your life in a complex aircraft. It's a little acronym you may have heard of called GUMPS. Gas, meaning the fuel selector is on its proper tank. Undercarriage, meaning the gear is down and locked. Mixture, full forward or set for takeoff. Prop, full forward and switches on. This will be our short pre-landing checklist and have everything configured in case we need to go around or if we touch and go. So a beam the numbers, the first thing we'll do is bring the power back to about 12 inches, holding the nose up to retain altitude, and run through gumps. Gas, which is on the floor and off screen here, is on the proper tank. We'll bring the undercarriage down. Mixture goes full rich. Prop goes forward. And the switches, fuel pump and landing light, turn on. When we're in the white arc, we can introduce a flap and start our descent. When on base and final, run through gumps again to make sure everything is where it should be, and also check the gear position lights. They should all three be lit up, indicating the gear is down and locked. From here, we're ready to land, touch and go, or go around. It's all configured for us. 